Okay, so let's move on. Now, again, remember the reason we're talking about this church, this is very, very important. We, we do not talk about this as a church anymore. And the reason that we talk about this is because I believe that once you know what Christ has done for you personally, it should really just give us boldness to go out and just take over the world. Amen? Um, and really, for those of you who have been here already, so the first three, the first three are in green because we've already covered them. And today I'm going to do the last two, but of course I'm going to do a review because some of you have not been here. But uh, basically, to summarize what Christ has done for us is pretend that you have a friend and you're standing in the street somewhere and this friend sees that you're about to get hit by a truck. So they come and push you out of the way, but then what happens in doing that is that they get hit by the truck and they die. Now, this has not happened. This is just, just uh, for illustration purposes. Let's say that a friend, friend comes back to see you. That does not happen in real life. Okay, I'm just, maybe it's a bad example, but I don't really know how else to illustrate this. Let's say that a friend comes back just to see you and say hi. And, um, and the first thing that you do when you see this friend that just gave their life for you is you ask him, why do you hate me? What is that person going to think? What? I just... But yet, that's what we do with God. How many of us literally sit there at night and we're thinking, why does God hate me? Why is God not doing this? Why is God not coming through? Why is God not fixing my finances? Why, why is he cursing me? You know, there's plenty of Christians that believe that God actually curses them. When Jesus Christ died and delivered us from the curse of the law. Amen? So... This is why we do this then, and, uh, and I think that the angels <laughs> are up in heaven knowing what Christ did, knowing what all this means, and then they see us there in our bed at night going, why do you hate me, God? Why don't you do anything for me? Why don't you bring me this person? Why don't you bring me the money that I need? Why, you know, yada, 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 fill in the, the blank. And so while we're doing that, the angels in heaven are going, are you insane? <laughs> Do you know what Christ has done for you? And so that's why we're doing this, because we need to know. All right? And the, by the way, I'm just going to throw this here. As we talk about the, uh, five, not the five things, because there's more things that cr the, cri the death of Christ has accomplished for us on the cross. Uh, for example, sanctification is another one that is not on here. Okay? I'm only doing five. But Calvinism, I don't understand why Calvinism is growing so much here in America. It, it's church. You need to know Calvinism is heresy. And you need to, you need to pay, t pay attention because uh, every now and then I hear someone that's listening. I don't even want to say even one name from these Calvinistic preachers because I don't, I don't want to give them platform here, <laughs> especially if it's being recorded. And, and, okay, but if you listen to someone on, on uh, I was going to say TV, <laughs> I don't know, what do you say these days? YouTube, your, your phone, your iPad, <laughs> okay, whatever. You know, please come and check with us because some of these guys, they're Calvinist. And that is Calvin, they, they preach Calvinism, and that is heresy. That's the, basically the doctrine that says that God created people to hate and to send to hell. Okay, so see this nice family right here? The reason they're crossed off is because under the Calvinistic view, there is, God creates people, there is people on this earth alive right now that they're going to go to hell because God specifically created them to go to hell. I mean, it's, it's just, and the thing is that that's not what the Bible says. And so by this view, then John 3.16 really is a lie, right? Because John 3.16 says that for God so loved the world. But these people are part of the world, so if he created them to go to hell, then he doesn't love the world. He loves some people of the world. Does that make sense? So if you put Calvinism into all this, then really the Bible is just turned upside down and, and it's full of lies. So, and it goes, it flies against what Christ did for us on the cross. All right, so we're going to finish today then real quick. All right, uh, this is what we did in the past couple of Sundays, but for those of you that did, were not here, a quick review. One of the things that Christ did for us is called expiation, and it is a removal of sin. And not only is it a removal of sin, but it's a removal of guilt, shame, self-condemnation because of our sin. Okay? So again, church, 
when we sin, we can just come to God. We know that we're forgiven. And then we move on. Just leave it. Just forget about it. Amen? Many of us carry sins for years and decades when we've already been forgiven. And so the devil keeps beating us down with that. All right? Another thing that Christ did on the cross for us, or what his death accomplishes for us, is propitiation. And that is a removal of God's wrath. That's why we have this here. This is true. God is truly not mad at you. Because Christ, his sacrifice on the cross, removed that wrath. And then not only is he not mad at you, but you have God's favor in your life. That's why Pastor Dobby can call and talk to an unknown pastor named Martin in Texas and say, Hey, you know, do you have any accommodations for me? She doesn't know me from Adam, but she can do that because she's a child of God and she knows that God provides. And he did, didn't he? <laughs> and that's how we met. I remember that first conversation. Yeah, she was very bold, very upfront. I loved it. And we talked about deep things, and, and it was just it, it, really the, that. Church, that is what knowing this in your heart then should make a difference in your life if we apply it. Instead of, okay, you know, yeah, that's a nice word. I can't even pronounce it. But another thing that uh, is accomplished for us is reconciliation. So it's a removal of the alienation from God. And church, remember, before we were saved, okay, we were enemies of God. I hate to tell you this. And I know that in the world you hear all the time, we're all children of God. We're all children of God. That is not what the Bible says. I am so sorry. That is not what the Bible says. Okay? And so because we were enemies, the death of Christ, and now we can reconcile with God. Okay? Um, and did you know that you're a friend of God? Say, I am a friend of God. Everyone say, I am a friend of God. Doesn't that feel good? Yeah, say it again. I am a friend of God. Church, what a privilege. You need to walk out of here knowing, you know what? I am a friend of God. Think about your best friend, how much you love him or her. You know what? You're even better than that with God. Amen? So that's, that is what we need to know. And again, no, we're not all children of God. This verse, and by the way, it's not just what I'm saying. This is what the Bible says. Galatians 4, 4 to 5. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, Born under the law to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. Okay? How are you going to be adopted, right, uh, if you're already a, a son or a daughter? Well, we are adopted because before we were enemies of God. Okay? And once we receive Christ, we're no longer enemies. Okay? Uh, and Romans 5.10 it says it clear, for if while we were what? It doesn't say for a while we were children of God. It says while we were enemies. We were reconciled to God. Because think about it. If we were children of God, then there is no need for reconciliation, no need for adoption. Right? Then, then the Bible is crazy. How do you adopt someone that's already your child? It, it's, it's crazy. So for if while we were enemies, we, recon we were reconciled to God through the death of His Son, much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Amen? And that is what we're talking about today, redemption. So if you look up redemption, here's definitions of redemption. One, to buy back, to repurchase, or to get or win back. Okay, number two, to free from what distresses or harms, such as A, to free from captivity by payment of ransom. B, to release from blame or debt. And that is what the death of Christ accomplished for us. Okay, so if you put it all together, then redemption, first of all, before we get to the definition, redemption implies previous bondage. Indeed, in the Garden of Eden, we fell into captivity, into bondage to sin. Because of our sin. Does that make sense? So in other words, if you read the uh, definition of redemption, it says a buy back. Okay, so if I want to buy something back, that means that I had it, but it's no longer with me, so I got to get it back. Does that make sense? Something happened. All right? And so then 
then redemption presupposes that something bad already happened, so then someone's going to come and buy, buy you back, pay something. All right, and of course, so yes, because we were, uh, we fell into captivity at the Garden of Eden, okay? So then redemption, like what Christ did for us on the cross, is we were bought back, won back from captivity into, into sin. We were captive to sin through the payment for our sins with Christ's sacrifice on the cross. So see, Christ bought us back. He bought us back from slavery of sin. So you know that means the Bible talks about this. You and I are no longer slaves to sin. Think about this, church. You know what? Here's the thing. If you're struggling with sin, let me tell you something. You don't have to be a slave to that sin. Now, if you want to stay there, that, that's fine. It's not fine, actually. <laughs> Sorry, God. <laughs> that was a joke of the day. It's not fine but in the sense that, you know what, God is not going to, you know, throw your, you know what I'm saying, just tie a rope and just go against your will. He's not. That, that, that's why I said that, okay? But we don't have to be. And it's because if you're in Christ, you have the power to overcome that sin. You really do. The problem is that we don't believe that, right? We don't believe that. We don't come bold and say, God, okay, help me to overcome this. Take this, take this away from me. We don't do that. We kind of like, we either don't want to do that or because we like whatever we're doing or because we don't believe really that what the Bible says is true, okay? Um, so, and of course, verses about redemption. 1 Corinthians 6.20, you have been bought with a price, therefore, Glorify God in your bodies. So again, that's redemption. Remember, you're bought back. You're won back. So we were bought with a price. And remember, you have to pay a ransom, right? We read that over here in the definition. See, a buyback to get or win back to free from what distresses or harm, such as to free from captivity by what? Payment of a ransom. So that's what we read over here. You have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your bodies. 1 Peter 1, 18, 19, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life, inherited from your fathers, but with precious blood as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. Amen? Amen. That is who we are. We have been bought with the precious blood of Christ. So again, think about it. God, why do you hate me? I mean, this is... Right? And that's what the angels are going, you, you, you're insane. You don't understand. God doesn't hate you. And he doesn't curse you. He died for you. All right? So that's redemption. Now, another thing that was been accomplished with the death of Christ is justification. So God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is a grand, grand summary of what justification is, but let's... Um, Let's go back. Um, let's go back here. Justification. So, justification is, oh, here we go. I'm not going to say that it was actually out of order there, but anyway, I found my place. Okay, justification. Justification is simply a legal declaration. God declares something. That's all it is. What does He declare? Well, the second sentence. God pardons the sinner of all his sins or her sins and accepts and accounts the sinner as righteous in His sight. Right? So, and this happens at salvation. Right? So when Sandy, and Sandy, I'm approaching you. Uh, hello, Sandy. <laughs> You know, Sandy is actually a very happy person. If you get to know her, you know, she really is. She's always smiling, and, and anyway, it's great. So when Sandy accepted Christ, right, God said, okay, Sandy, I declare you're righteous. That's justification, okay? Free from sin, you are not righteous, all right? That's all it is. It's a declaration, a legal declaration that now Sandy is justified. All right, and um, what allows God to make this declaration? What allows God to say, Sandy, now you are 
righteous, you are free from sin. What allows him to declare her just and to justify her? Well, of course, it's Christ's death at the cross. Amen? All right? Okay. So, and guess what? All this is received by grace. There is nothing that you do. So, Ephesians 1, 7, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace. So, grace is something, you get something that you what? That you do not deserve. So, again, grace is something that you get even though you do not deserve it. All right? We don't deserve all this. God just does it freely. He gives it to us. Now, this is important because it is not based on what we do or we don't do. And the reason this is important, church, is because a lot of us think that, you know what? I watched a bad movie today. Oh, no, I, I'm, I've fallen out of grace. Now, we don't say it for, out of grace. We don't say it like that, but that's kind of what we think, right? So God is against me now. He's going to be mad at me, right? It's like, no, because you received that. It had nothing to do with what you did or didn't do. So, therefore, what you do or don't do does not take you away from the grace of God and what is yours because He wants to give it to you and I, even though we don't deserve it. Amen? Does that make sense, church? Are you with me? All right? Okay. So, um, this is a serious problem in the church today because many Christians have left the church because they were made feel condemned because of a sin or whatever or the way they dressed. And as you guys know, some churches, you have to dress this or like this or you have to dress like that. Uh, right? I know. I, one, of, one of you guys told me about a church that you have to, men have to wear ties or they cannot get into church. Can you imagine? Somebody at the door checking you out. And if you don't have a tie, they send you home. I mean, that is crazy. All right? So then what happens is a lot of Christians, then they're made feel unworthy. They may feel like, well, I guess this is not based on grace. This is based on what I do. So then they walk away like, you know what? I guess I got to go get my act together. And I got to go and cleanse myself. I need to clean up my sins so that I can be worthy of going back to church. And so they think this is what happens. But in reality, this is what happens. And we try to cleanse ourselves. So you got, now church, listen to this. This is true in America today. You got thousands upon thousands of Christians that have left the church because they're trying to clean up their act, not knowing that you cannot cleanse yourself. Only the blood of Jesus cleanses you. Amen? Amen. So when you and I go fruitlessly trying to go clean up our act, we might as well just go and just jump in the mud. <laughs> right? Sandy, that's a picture of people in the mud. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Sandy, for helping me with my message here. <laughs> okay? Right, and so you got thousands upon thousands of Christians that are going into the mud, and they're, they're getting mud and put it on themselves, right? And all they're doing is getting dirtier and dirtier, and it's not going to happen. What they need to do is to come back to God, come back to the church, and let God cleanse them. Amen? Hallelujah. All right. So, justific verses of justification, therefore, having been What? Justified by faith. So remember, you're justified by faith, not by works. Not because you went and you cleansed yourself. But we know that it's impossible. You cannot do it. You're justified by faith. You simply believe, and then you're justified. So therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord. That is so important, peace with God. You know how many Christians out there do not have peace with God? Forget the unbelievers. We we'll already know that the unbelievers are saying what? Somebody save me. I don't care how you do it. Just save me. I've been waiting here for you. Church, you realize that the world is out there waiting for you and I have to go talk to them? That is so true. This week I could tell you. I talked to someone yesterday. They were, they were, I noticed they were eating lunch and then uh, they prayed. So I, I asked them, what church do you go to? And this person said, actually, I don't go to church. I'm looking for something. And we sat down, had a 20-minute conversation on how this person literally said, I'm looking for a church that doesn't have all this stuff to do. You know, I mean, you mean like a, a list of rules and regulations? Yeah. You know, like, like, like the churches where they stand at the door and the men have to wear a tie, and if you don't wear a tie, they send you away. 
That, that's a rule and regulation, right? So we were talking about grace, and, 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 and this person is kind of like literally just waiting there to talk. And we're going to continue talking about this. And eventually, the church, trust me, just like some of you are here today, there is some that will be a part of the church. Um, but literally, that's an example of what I'm talking about. This person was literally just it's waiting for somebody to come and talk to them. Because I asked this person, how do you know? How do you find out about that, that this is not about rules? They don't know it yet, but they kind of sense it in their spirit. This, this can be about rules and regulations made by men. It can be. They're looking for something else. And I said, how do you start getting a hold that, that there is not about rules and regulations made by men? And she said, well, it, it's because I've just started talking to people, and I just feel like this is not right. And then some people have been saying, you know what, yeah, and then I've listened to this person, and, you know, uh, again, I want to see on TV, but whatever it is, YouTube, I don't know, <laughs> these days, <laughs> okay. You can see that from the old days, right, the TV. <laughs> okay. And I said, you know what, actually, you're right. Anyway, I, 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 I gave her a card, and, and uh, uh, I actually sent her a couple of our videos, you know, that we've done on what parts of the law that we keep. I said, look, there's only a minute and a half videos. Watch these, and then we're going to discuss them. But church, people are actually literally waiting for you. That's why I love that song. You know what? This is what the unbelievers are saying. They don't know it, but that's what they're saying. Okay? So even though Christianity is declining in America, don't think, well, people are interested in God. Yes, they are. But we talked with the youth last Wednesday. All kinds of weird cults, religions are out there growing because people are very interested in God. And what it makes sense, did you know you were created to worship God? Did you know that? You cannot live without worshiping God. So you got to worship something. That's why these people are desperate looking for something. They're waiting for you and I to go and talk to them. Amen? All right. So, um, and again, I want you to understand, we've talked about this before, but up here I'm almost to the end now. Please understand that when this verse says we have peace with God, it's what we just said. God is not mad at us, okay? The wrath of God has been taken away by the death of Jesus Christ, okay? So now we can have peace with God. And so again, uh, for those of you, this is your first time listening to this. We talked about how this verse is a very, uh, a verse that's used during Christmas time. And, and let's read it. It says, and suddenly there was with the angel and multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. So we have taken that to mean that, oh, well, at Christmas time in the world, happy and there's lots of peace and there's going to be peace in the world. Well, it doesn't mean there's not going to be wars, but it's talking about, it's talking about what we just read over here. Okay, that the wrath of God is not upon us. So now we can have peace with God. You don't have to go to bed now thinking, Lord, why do you hate me? No, it's done. We're at peace with God. Amen? And, um, and church, again, I just, I think Pastor Davi, with that one phrase that she said that she boldly called and asked, that's what we need to do. Okay? And, you need, and church, I'm proud of you because I am hearing uh, testimonies. Janie, can I share yours? Uh, unless you want to come up and share it. No. I love for her to come up, but that's okay. If you don't, don't want to come up, you don't have to. Basically, Janie was bold, and she believed in Philippians 4.13 that says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. And even though talking and interrupting someone is not necessarily in your blood. <laughs> Trust me, it's not in anybody's, you, you, but you, you can learn, all right? Uh, she talked to someone, from what, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm going to tell the story. Oh, yes, I sort of forgot that part. For, for the sake of uh, live, the live stream. Uh, so sh you were at the mall, you, you and uh, five, five Below, which is a store. Okay. I don't know why I keep saying you were at the mall. It doesn't matter. But she was at a store, and you were walking out of the store. And this other lady was, okay, that, actually, that, that's a good point right there. There was another lady walking out of the store holding the door for you. So you walked out, and then...
Okay, so then this lady was holding the door open, and then Janie said, thank you. And then they, they just started a conversation. Church, that is a very natural thing. I know that a lot of us are freaked out. I, 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 no, it, it, it's actually, it's very natural to interrupt people and talk to them. And here's the deal. Okay, like she opened the door for you. You know how many people throughout my day I talk to simply because guess what? They start talking to me. That is the truth. I think what happens is that we miss it, right? Because you could have just walked away, thank you, and then just walked away, right? But you didn't. You took the time to talk to her. That's really all we got to do. And so you said to her, thank you, and, and you established a conversation. And then you said, I like your accent, and you ask her, where are you from? And she, she okay, and she says she was from Peru. Yeah, I wonder where that country is. No, I never heard of it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. D okay, for those of you who didn't hear that. So she asked her, remember that simple question, do you go to any church? Church, that is, that is such a simple question. You don't have to have a degree from a Bible school, okay? You don't have to have a doctorate to say, where do you go to church? And she said, no, I'm not right now. And so you said, well, I'll invite you to, to my church. And she said, right now, I can't, I'm working. But guess what? Establish friendship, start discipling her. Like that woman did with that man, right? And eventually came to church and became saved, right? Exactly. Okay, that, that's how you do it. And then you're saying that she basically initiated the exchange of phone numbers. Did you hear that church? I know a lot of us are like, I, 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 they don't know me. How did I give you their phone number? Are you crazy? Church, ask. Right, Pastor Dabby? Ask. Be bold about it. Right? Let's stop walking with our tail between our legs. That is not what God created us. Right? He's given us a spirit of love, self-discipline, and what? And power. Right? Is that right? Yes. Power. Right? Power. Think about that. You have power. We just don't use it. Right? Instead of walking in power, so I like, well, I can't talk to that person because I don't want to wear my pants right here. I don't have another pair in the car. Okay. So anyway, thank you. So you exchange phone numbers and yes, yeah, so yeah, establish the friendship. Remember, church. You are not looking for converts. You are looking for friends. The minute you make a friend, the rest will follow. Okay? And that was my problem. The 10 years that I was out there talking to people that I told you about, I was looking for converts, and nothing ever happened. But the minute you're still looking for friends, then the door just opened. Amen? Let's stand. Hallelujah. Let's bow our heads. Lord Jesus, what a privilege. Lord, what a privilege to be called a child of God. Lord, what a privilege we have here that we are your children. Lord, how awesome it is. All this stuff that you've done for us, and we don't even deserve it, yet you give it to us anyway. Father, we thank you, and we praise you for that. Lord, we glorify your name. We sanctify your name. Lord, give us that boldness. Lord, like Pastor David, like, 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 like Janie, who just started talking to the woman. Hallelujah. Give us that boldness, Lord, in every area of our life. Jesus, because we are your children, and that is an awesome thing. And anyone that's here today, if you want to rededicate yourself to God or uh, you want to give your life to God, just, just if you want to raise your hand, I'll pray for you right where you're at. You don't have to move. We'll pray together and uh, pray that God will just come upon you and, and give you His Holy Spirit and the power to walk out and change the world. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Anybody else? I see a hand. I see another one. All right. That's two. Anybody else? Hallelujah. All right, let, let's pray. Let's just pray. Church, God is here. Do you feel his presence?
If you don't feel his presence, just take time to forget whatever you're thinking about and just focus on God right now. Let him touch you because he wants to touch you. He wants to heal you. He wants to provide for you. And he's speaking to you right now. Church, don't say, I can't hear from God. Yes, you can. He's talking to you right now. Just listen. I want to pray for those two people that raised their hands. And uh, I want to pray just, the Holy Spirit just come upon them right now. I want to just give them the boldness that they're seeking. And the faith to indeed literally move mountains. As so many Christians have done for millennia. But we're no different than them. We have the same God that they had. And so I pray for these two and for everyone here, Lord. So let us walk out in boldness, knowing that you're not mad at us, knowing that you have, we have your favor, and you're giving us power. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you're going to lead us and use us to change the world, literally, because that's what you want us to do. We thank you and we praise you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Listen, church, you are beyond blessed. Amen. You have more power than you think that you do, and God wants us to use that power for his glory. Amen. All right. Well, there is new people here today, so please be sure to go out and, and uh, hug some necks that you don't know. And once again, we're going out to lunch. If you can stay, we go to a restaurant, and we just fellowship. And I guess today we're going to a place where, we, are we going to, uh, I guess there's a restaurant where there is pool and all kinds of stuff to do. Not a pool, a pool table. <laughs> okay? So uh, we'll put the address over here for those who that can go and join us. It'd be great. And uh, amen. Blessings.